I'm going to go through the Leeds Metropolitan recommendations for referencing within your assignments. The location of the document is leedsmet.ac.uk students documents quote underscore unquote dot pdf. This outlines the Leeds Metropolitan recommended for correct referencing in your assignments. The method used is Harvard referencing. Now the key thing is, having marked a lot of work over the last couple of years or so, it seems fairly clear to me that there's a lot of confusion about bibliography and referencing. It is not sufficient just to look at a load of websites, write your assignment, pulling bits out of that, and then listing those references at the end. You need to say within the work itself where you've used those, those references. So just putting a list on the end is not sufficient. The reason being is that that will be treated as plagiarism. If I go through here, you will see what I mean by that. That's fairly clear. You will be assigned a zero mark for plagiarism. As I said, just putting a list at the end is not sufficient. So there are two stages to referencing the sources. Refer to the source in your text, that's called the citation, and then give full details of the source in your bibliography. There's a bit of a tip there. When you're searching the literature, or note down all the required details of the source that you find. So if you find a really good source and think, oh, this is brilliant, I'll use bits of this, then make sure you make all details. It's, it, it, it's sensible anyway, because you may want to go back to it later when you're working further on your assignment. So here's an example of how it, the citation and the bibliography works together. Here's some text. Now, the bits in quotes will be taken directly from that reference. Cottrell 2003, page 1, is the shorthand. The point is, if I or anyone else looking at that sees that Cottrell and brackets a year and a page, I expect to be able to find that in your bibliography at the end. And in italics, the Study Skills Handbook, the name of it, which edition it is, the publisher. So with that information, I could then go to a library and get that book. If there are a number of books within the year by the same author, let's say Cottrell S had produced two books in 2003, you would use 2003A and 2003B. Just actually putting this in shows how much work you've done. So it's to your benefit to put lots of these references in because it means you've read it, you've understood it, and you're then reflecting back. You're not cutting and pasting stuff out, you've actually read it and using your own words. So for example here, in this short page, someone is demonstrating that they've read uh, four different books, and they've pulled together that, that information. This is how you lay it out, this is the way that I expect to see it. You should be writing quite succinctly in your assignment. I'm not expecting a book to be written. I'm expecting you to demonstrate that you've read a number of different books, different references, different websites. You've pulled together your own views. You've synthesized your own views. How do you cite sources? How do you actually use that? You've read a book. You've looked at a website. There are lots of different ways you can do it. Paraphrase, so you can rephrase the original, so you may want to use your own English, that's fine, so long as you're referencing it. Rephrase original ideas, opinions in your own words. You might want to summarize it, so you might have read two pages on a website. You might want to just succinctly write it in a short form to summarize it, giving your own interpretation of what the source says, rather than just simply re rewording it. You might just refer to a source, mention the work without giving much detail, so that it's a pointer for someone else. Quoting, you, you can use actual words, provided those words are enclosed in quotation marks and clearly identified as from that. And obviously in scientific papers, you may want to use other people's experimental results. 
to demonstrate a point that you're making. That's fine, so long as you identify that person as having done the work and don't try and pretend you have. In many cases, you can simply insert the author's name, followed by the date of publication. That reference would be in, the, in your bibliography list at the end of your assignment. If the source is anonymous, use the title. So, for example, magazine articles and things like that. If there's no date, for example, um, sometimes on the internet, you can use ND. Multiple authors. What we tend to do, there are different ways of doing this. This example here, Shields, Ford and Taylor, 2004. Or uh, Shields, Ford and Taylor. Another way you can do it is by doing Johnson and others. Sometimes you'll see it as Johnson et al, E-T-A-L, which is just the Latin for and others. As I mentioned earlier, Morgan 2001A, Morgan 2001B, where there's more than one in the same year. Direct quotations. If you are directly quoting the author's own words in your writing, you should enclose in quotation marks and give the author date and page numbers that quotation was taken from in brackets. The standard abbreviations are page is just P, pages is PP, section is S, and sections SS dot. Those are standard abbreviations. There's an example where someone's quoted word for word from Darwin, 1859, page 490. You're allowed to miss out bits if you just want to choose particular words or if it doesn't make sense in context. There are bits, there are bits of the sentence you don't need to include. Just put dot, dot, dot in. So in this example, a shorter version of that, as you can read. Sometimes you may want to add your own words to make it clearer. If there's a long paragraph about something that's clear in the context of the book, this example, because this has come from a large book, a, a larger section, you don't know who the they are. So you put in square brackets the council employees. Sometimes you may not find the original source. That's, that's not uncommon. So if you can't find the original source, don't worry. You can, you can use the source where you found it. So Smith, 2001, quoted in Jones, 2004, page 63. So that means you, can, you don't have to backtrack all the way back. In your bibliography, include the date and publication details of the piece of work and then quoted in or cited in, followed by the reference for the sources you've actually seen. So if you can't find the original, make sure you put where you got it from.